And it says, it's from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. You will live by faith. I said you will live by faith. That's where we begin trusting the Lord. Because of this incorruptible faith. I pray the Lord will give that incorruptible faith. And what that incorruptible faith will produce in your life will be incorruptible in Jesus' name. In John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I'm in verse 12. John 1 verse 12. But as many as received him to them gave he power everybody say power. power to them he gave power the people that believe the people that trust the people that put their faith incorruptible faith in the lord a kind of faith the devil cannot touch a kind of faith the world cannot corrupt a kind of faith that you don't have any reverse gear. I'm coming to Christ. I'm going to Christ. I'm going to lean on Christ. I'm going to depend upon Christ. I'm going to trust in Christ. And nothing changes your mind. And to them that believe, he said he gave the power to become the sons of God. What a dynamic way that can change a child of the devil and change him to a son of God. He gives us this faith, incorruptible faith, and that turns everything around that now you become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I'm reading there from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you, as he weakened or oh, at edge in trespasses and sins. You might have heard that before. Think about that. It says, when you hear that the dead is raised, he's been dead physically, and he's been in the grave. And then four days after Jesus came and said, Lazarus, come forth. You see? That is spectacular. That is incredible. Well, we were dead spiritually. And spiritual death is as serious, if more serious than physical death. And then Jesus comes and by his quickening power, he says, he has quickened us. He has raised us up. He has changed us. From being spiritually dead to being spiritually alive. In verse 2 it says, wherein in time past, he walked according to the of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience is saying this in the past. And then they saving faith, dynamic faith, came into our lives. And it is that dynamic faith, the life transforming faith that came and then turned everything around unexpectedly. How could something just come into our lives and something that was dead comes alive and something that was polluted becomes pure and something that was defiled then becomes divine because of that incorruptible faith. I pray that faith will work in your life. I said it will work in your life. And then a mighty change in your heart. A mighty change in your life. A mighty change in your behavior. A mighty change in your character. A mighty change in your spiritual situation. In verse 3, among whom also we all had a conversation in times past. In the laws of her flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Think about this kind of faith that can take a child of wrath and make that a child of mercy, a child of blessing, a child of God, a citizen of the kingdom of God. I pray this faith will work in your life. I said it will work in your life. Anywhere this faith is. It draws, it works, a dynamic thing. 
a life transforming thing. And uh, you know, there are people that just sit of faith as something small there, as something insignificant there. I'm telling you, faith is the very thing that takes hold of your life and turns everything around and makes a child of hell, makes that person a saint for heaven. In verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us, made us alive together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. You know what that faith does? That incorruptible faith draws the grace of God into your life. And that grace will be upon us in your life today. I said that grace will be upon us in your life today. The faith we have in Christ. The faith in Christ, the faith we make, that makes us to trust in the Lord Almighty because of the atoning death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. That faith draws the grace of God into our lives. And that grace makes a change in verse 6. And he has raised us up together and made us see together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It makes us not to see together. Think about that. A kind of faith that can transport you out of the realm of human weakness. And then you are exalted and you are made to see together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. That, in verse 7, in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Then it says in verse 8, by grace, for by grace are you saved. For by grace are you saved. For by grace are you saved. How are we saved? How are we saved? If it is by grace, that means the free mercy of God. And when you have that faith, I'm sure the faith is coming in your heart now. And you are trusting the Lord. That grace of God that brings salvation will come to every one of us in Jesus' name. For by grace are ye saved through faith, through faith, through faith, incorruptible faith, saving faith, a dynamic faith, a gift that is coming from God and coming from heaven. It says we are saved by grace and through this faith and that not of yourself. And that not of yourself. It is, it is what? Tell me out loud. Tell me out loud. It is the gift of God. That means then, because it is coming from God, from the very heart of God, and from the very bosom of God. That's why it's incorruptible. The incorruptible faith that produces a glorious saving power in your life. He tells us then, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Now it goes on beyond that. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 15. Acts of the Apostles chapter 15, verse 9. Incorruptible faith. What does it do? Number one, it changes a sinner into a saint. Number one, it changes a corrupt life into a clean life. Number one, it changes a dead soul into a soul that comes alive and now is living gloriously in the presence of the Lord. Acts chapter 15 verse 9. I put no difference between us and them. Purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts, not only their lives, because your life issues from your heart. And when the heart is purified, is made holy, is sanctified, your life normally will be purified and made holy and sanctified. And it is this incorruptible faith that does that. And if you are dreaming of being holy and being pure and being purified and poured, it is this faith, incorruptible faith that you need is coming your way today. I said it's coming your way today. And those who have been praying, desiring, and those who have been saying, Oh Lord, I want to be pure. I want to be holy. I want to be sanctified. It is this incorruptible faith that brings that sanctification. That holiness and that purity, it's your heart, it's your life, that's in the secret and in the open. 
in the private and in the public, in the family and in the community, in the office and in the church. The holiness and the purity will so radiate through your life that people will know the incorruptible faith, the incorruptible faith, the incorruptible faith has done the work in you because it's sin. He put no difference between us and them. Be refined, sanctifying, making holy, making them righteous by faith, through faith. We're looking at Acts chapter 26, Acts chapter 26, and in verse 18. Acts 26, verse 18. To open their eyes, I pray God will open your eyes. I say God will open your eyes. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. What can do that? What can do that? That your eyes will be open. And what you never saw before, you begin to see. What can do that? It's the faith. Incorruptible faith. Coming right from the throne of God. And coming into your heart, into your life. It opens your eyes, not only that. And to turn them from the power of darkness unto light. And from the power of Satan unto God. It's that incorruptible faith that does that. And that they might receive, they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified. Tell me the next two words. Tell me the next two words. Shout it loud at me. Sanctified by faith. Sanctified by faith. And you know, when you have this corruptible faith, you're saved. When you have this incorruptible faith, you'll be sanctified. You'll be made holy. You'll be made righteous. And all those uh, secret things, and all the depravity and the carnality, the faith, incorruptible faith you have in the Lord, will clear everything away. And this in the morning, it will be cleared away in Jesus' name. And then, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8. Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 8. It says, These are the words of Jesus, and you shall receive power. What will you receive? Power. Weakness? No. Timidity? No. Fear? No. And you shall receive power. Again, it comes by faith. We sing peace, purity, power. The peace of God at salvation comes by faith. And the purity at sanctification, it comes by faith. And the power that comes with the Holy Ghost baptism, it comes by faith. And if that's your desire, peace, purity, power, mine in the Lord, mine in the Lord, mine, mine in the Lord. It is yours by faith this morning in Jesus' name. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. And in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth, this faith will keep on walking in you. Incorruptible faith, incorruptible faith, this faith will keep on walking in every one of us in Jesus' name. Now, the power, this Holy Ghost baptism will receive faith. We're looking at Galatians chapter 13. Galatians chapter 13. Sorry, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 2, and then verse 14, Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. This only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. The Apostle Paul reminded the Galatian believers, and he said, now you have received the power, the anointing, the unction, the authority that comes for the Holy Ghost. How did you receive that? Did you receive that by the works of the law or by faith? The answer obviously is by faith. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. The peace of salvation coming to the Gentiles by faith. And the purity of the heart, the sanctification, the holiness. And this blessed experience coming from the very throne of God through Calvary unto us. Come in by faith in Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. In the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In the anointing, the unction that flows into our lives by the Holy Ghost. It says it also through faith. 
that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. The last two words. Tell me again. Through what? Through faith. That everything we get from the Lord, from the salvation to the sanctification to the Holy Ghost baptism, we get through faith. Now, after we have settled that foundation of salvation, of sanctification, and of the Holy Ghost baptism, we now want to build on that. First, we have the incorruptible faith. Now, second, we have the all-inclusive faith. The all-inclusive faith. Point number two. The great power. The great power. The great power of an all-inclusive faith. Pay attention. This faith is coming to you now. Faith that will work in the family. Faith that will work in the community. Faith that will work in the church. Faith that will work everywhere. That's all inclusive faith is here this morning. I said it's here this morning. It's in your heart. I said it's in your heart. I said it's in your heart. It is in your heart. And as you manifest that all inclusive faith this morning, all mountains will roll away in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, I can believe. I said, I can believe. The Lord never asked us to believe when he knows it's impossible. He knows it's real. And it knows that it is something you can do. And because he knows you can do it, that is why he's saying, if you can believe this morning, if you can believe, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. The Lord is saying that right as you are there, there is something that is called an all-inclusive faith that any challenge, any hurdle, any problem, any mountain, any difficulty, this all-inclusive faith will roll it away in Jesus' name. Here are the words of Jesus. Jesus said unto him, and Jesus is saying unto you, and Jesus is saying unto everyone, everyone hearing the word of God this morning, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes this morning all things are possible all things are possible all things are possible and the disciples never understood they never understood until they came to the acts of the apostles and they saw that saul it was an impossible case saul an impossible case even when god told ananas ananas get up and go to that street that is called straight you'll see one man there his name is saul and then you lay your hands on him and something great and something wonderful will happen he said lord i've had a lot about this man this man i don't think he will ever be converted all things are possible saul was converted everyone here he'll be converted in jesus name and then they came to Jerusalem and they saw that man that was born lame.